YouTube, it's Zoe or Read by Zoe and today I'm going to share with you all my March reading wrap up and my April to be read pile. I only read three books in March and I know I said only but I'm not that disappointed. I was actually 100% expecting that because I have been in the worst reading slump ever for the past couple of months. Longer than that. It's been since like last August that I've been in a reading slump. It's been so long since I've heard the siren song of a book. You know what I'm talking about. The feeling deep down in your soul where you don't feel complete, you don't feel quite right unless you have a book in your hand and your mind is in a completely different world. I love that feeling so much and I think I'm starting to feel that way again. I'm hearing that siren song. It has been so long but I have been crawling out of that reading slump and I'm finally starting to see the light. I don't want to say anything officially. I don't want to officially say I'm out of my reading slump because the last time I did that back in October it pushed me into an even bigger reading slump so I don't want to risk it. But I have been reading more lately and it feels oh, so good. I'm back babies. <laughs> I got a little carried away there. Basically to sum that up I was in a reading slump in March and now in April I may not be in a reading slump anymore. Let's get to the video, shall we? I have changed up my rating scale from a zero to five star rating to the school grading scale, so F minus to A plus. I felt like the star rating was very restrictive and I couldn't accurately measure my feelings with that, so I've changed it. Anyway, now on to the video. The first book I finished in March was My Not So Perfect Life by Sophie Kinsella, one of my favorite contemporary authors. She is so hilarious and her books are just like candy. This book was no exception. I read it so quickly. It's a pretty hefty contemporary book. It's over 400 pages. Yes, it's over 400 pages. It's actually quite a bit deeper than many of her other books. There were definitely more serious elements in this book than compared to, say, Confessions of a Shopaholic, but it was a very pleasant surprise. I loved the meaning behind this book, the moral of the story. The story focuses on 20-something Katie Brenner, who wants everyone to think that she has this perfect, successful, working woman, London lifestyle, but she really doesn't. She posts all of these fake posed pictures on Instagram and is constantly comparing herself to others and like it says on the inside cover it is part love story and part workplace drama it is a witty critique of the false judgments we make in a social media obsessed world on my new grading scale I give it an A minus if you liked any of Sophie Kinsella's other books definitely give it a try next I read Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli I have heard tremendous things about this book on and off booktube and it's being made into a movie so I thought it was time to give it a try I love it. I gave it a solid A. This follows Simon, a teenage boy who is gay but not out to anyone except this other boy named Blue. They secretly email each other under fake names so they don't know who the other person really is but they go to the same high school and one day someone finds these secret emails and blackmails Simon. I don't want to say any more about this book because I think it's best to go in it not knowing too much but I will say that it's good and I highly recommend it. I will be doing a review video on this book so keep an eye out for that if you want to know more of my thoughts and opinions. The last book I read in March was Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I read this for the Ostentatious Book Club, my book club where we read a classic book every other month. It started as a Jane Austen book club, hence the name Ostentatious, where we read a Jane Austen book every single month. But we have since finished all of the Austen books so I have decided to modify it and turn it into a more chilled, relaxed book club where we read a variety of classics and have more time to read them. Anyway, back to Jane Eyre. This video is full of so many tangents, I am sorry about that. But I gave Jane Eyre a solid A. Before starting this book, I honestly had no idea what it was about. I knew it was about a woman named Jane Eyre who lived more than a hundred years ago. I had never seen an adaptation of the book. I had never had someone give me a brief synopsis about it. So this definitely exceeded my non-existent expectations. Now onto the April TBR. I've already finished two of the books on this list. What reading slump? 
The first book I've already finished in April is The Star Touched Queen by Roshni Chakshi. I'm not going to review this right now, I'm going to save this for my April wrap up, but I will say it was quite difficult for me to get through and the only reason why I persevered is because the next book is A Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chakshi. This is the April book of the month for Fiction Faction, a new book club I'm in with Natasha from Toshopolis, Hannah from A Clockwork Reader, and Maureen from Maureen Kiwi. This is a companion novel to The Star Touched Queen, so you don't have to read that one before you read this one, but I personally decided to. I have heard that this one is easier to get through than The Star Touched Queen, so I'm excited to get to it and read it in time for our live show over on Natasha's channel, Toshopolis, on May Fifth. Another book that is on my April TBR but that I've already started is Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery or Lucy Maud Montgomery, whichever one you prefer. This is the April and May book of the month for Ostentatious, the classics book club that I was talking about earlier and I am so excited for this. Although I grew up watching the 1985 adaptation, this is going to be the first time that I am actually reading the entire thing. I kind of read it two years ago for my children's literature class. But by kinda, I mean I only read the parts that I needed for my essay and then I spark noted the rest of the book. <laughs> I know, I'm not too proud, but I am redeeming myself now by reading this in my spare time and reading the entire thing. So that's okay, right? Redeemed. Redeemed! <laughs> the next book I already read all the way through, I didn't spark note it, and it is Queens of Gig by Jen Wilde. I read this last night in three hours. It is so addictive. It is such a deliciously cheesy contemporary romance book told in dual perspective, and it takes place at a convention very much like Comic-Con. There is also amazing diversity in it. And the last book on my TBR, I started right after I finished Queens of Geek. I finished that book at 1 a.m. and I was on such a reading high that I had to pick up another book, and it is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I have seen the movie and I really enjoyed it, and this is also one of my dad's favorite books, so I thought, why not read it? It's also pretty short, so I'm pretty sure I can get through it this month. So that was my tangenty. That's not a word. My rambly, that's not a word either. My very long-winded <laughs> March wrap-up and April TBR. Let me know in the comments what your favorite book from March was, or if you're like me and didn't read a lot in March, what you are looking forward to reading in April. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you all soon in my next video. Bye! <laughs>